You're listening to the Golf Unfiltered Podcast, your source for in-depth interviews with the biggest names, brands, and personalities in golf. Our mission, to keep you informed and help you enjoy the game even more. And now, the owner and host of the Golf Unfiltered Podcast, Adam Fonseca. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Golf Unfiltered Podcast. I am your host, as always, Adam from GolfUnfiltered.com. Find us all over social media at Golf Unfiltered. Go ahead and send us an email, golfunfiltered at gmail.com. Welcome to episode 202. Be sure to go out to iTunes and leave us a rating if you like what we do here on the show. Any rating helps. Five-star ratings help the most, of course, and what that does is it boosts us up the podcast charts ever so slightly. Be sure to leave a review as well because that feedback is something I take very seriously to use to improve, to make things better, to continue to do the things that people like us uh, for. So, hello to our friends over at thehackersparadise.com. If you're listening to this on the THP radio app, hello to all of you. Thanks for your support over the uh, the years and the months and the episodes that we've recorded. Hello to our friends, of course, over at Cleveland and Srixon Golf. Folks, I had the chance finally to go out yesterday uh, played a little golf after work, took off a little bit early, got to try the uh, Strixon Z Forged irons. They are incredible. And I got to say, they are player irons. They are a little bit thinner of a profile than the other irons I was playing, but they're very forgiving. I was actually very surprised by how forgiving they were. So if you're a little hesitant to try them out because you don't think you've got the game for it, you'd be surprised how far the uh, the handicap range is for these clubs. So be sure to go try them out. And last but not least, hello to our friends over at BudgetGolf.com. Perhaps you can check out all the Cleveland and Strixon equipment they have. See how I tied those two together, folks? That's because I'm a professional. Today, folks, we have a really great guest. But before I get into that, I wanted to make another quick special announcement. A little while ago, listeners to this show, followers to us on social and the website, probably remember some GU Shield coffee mugs that we uh, sold in a very limited batch. It was just kind of a little bit of a pilot test. And I got to say that they they sold pretty well. Well, they they sold out. We we don't have any more. And so uh, based on that and based on some of the feedback that all of you sent to us, hey, you got to offer more stuff. We decided to do that. And so now if you go on to golfandfilter.com at the top of the page, you're going to see a little link that says GU Merch. And if you click on that link, you're going to see the only product (laughs) that we are selling right now. And that is another limited edition GU Shield hat or golf cap, depending on the way your preference. Um, But anyway, it is a very high quality cap. Our friends over at Quad City Caps helped us out a lot with getting those uh, produced. They are unstructured, which means they're, uh, you know, they, they don't have that, that, stiff face i guess you can say they're they're a little bit floppy is another thing to say um and i just think that those fit better and i'm sure you know based on early feedback feedback from some of you you all feel the same way and so they are fully adjustable they've got the gu uh, shield logo right on the face of the cap and it is embroidered it is not a sticker it is actually really really well done i was surprised at how well they came out actually but uh, there is no surprise because quad city caps is a fine fine establishment and they've done a great job with these caps. So be sure to go out to golfandfilter.com, check those out, and pick yours up today while supplies last. Or if the demand is enough, maybe we'll do some more. Who knows? Anyway, also recently, one, uh, getting into today's topic, finally, a lot of people have been talking about, should we leave the flag stick in the putting green when we hit putts or not? Now, obviously, everyone knows that at the beginning of the year, the rule change by the USGA and RNA said, yes, sure, go ahead. You can leave the flag stick in while you're putting. Doesn't matter if the ball hits it. But the question from golfers everywhere, whether it be amateurs all the way up to the professional circuit, is does it benefit you in any way? Certainly there's the implication that it probably did if there was a rule in the past to prevent you from doing it. But now I'm not so sure. There have been a few studies that have been published, uh, some a little bit more scientific than the others. And one of those studies, and perhaps the best that I have seen, is one that was published in Golf Digest or on GolfDigest.com very recently. And the lead of that study, Mr. Tom Mace, is on the show today. He is a mechanical engineer with over 30 years' experience. He is from Cal Poly. He is a very, very smart individual. And he and I go a little bit deep today in our conversation to talk about the method that he used to conduct his study, a little bit about the team that he 
collaborated with to bring the study to all of us and to explain to us why he feels and his team feel that you should pull the flag stick 99.9% of the time. So very interesting discussion today, folks. If you like what we talk about today, let us know. Let's keep the conversation going as well. You know how to get in touch with me on, on Twitter and social media at Golf Unfiltered. Send an email, golfunfiltered at gmail.com as well. So that's enough chattering. Sit back, relax. We will be right back after a quick word from our friends over at the Four Golfers Network with Mr. Tom Mace from Cal Poly. Hi, this is Bill Hobson from the Four Golfers Network podcast. And as you and I enjoy this episode of Golf Unfiltered with my friend Adam, I'm reminded of an indisputable reality. We, as golfers, are nuts. We chase a small ball around the planet, spending thousands of dollars in the effort to get that ball into a tiny hole. We then yell at the ball and curse it when it doesn't listen, even though it can't listen, it's a ball. This insanity is all part of the magic of the game, and it's what we celebrate on the Four Golfers Network podcast every Monday when a fresh episode comes your way on Apple Podcasts, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeart, you know, all the places. So after you finish listening to Adam today, I'd love to have you check out the Four Golfers Network podcast, that's F-O-R-E, where we celebrate the game with top name guests and an exploration of the things about golf that both drive us crazy and bring us back for more. I stink! The ball is just sitting there, and I can't hit it! Welcome back, folks. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, very excited to welcome Mr. Tom Mace. He is a professor of mechanical engineering at California Polytechnic State University. Tom, thanks so much for joining us today to talk about flag sticks. It's a topic I never thought we'd talk about. (laughs) Adam, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, happy to talk about these uh, lesser lesser talked about entities of golf and it definitely is and it's it's something that is certainly a hot topic uh this year in 2019 uh ever since the change of uh the rule where you can actually leave the flag stick in while putting now uh the usga and rna making that decision not too long ago and we could certainly get into the technicalities and all that here in a second but uh what we'd like to do first tom if you would is just let us know a little bit about you know, your background, uh, your experience, and what led you to conducting this study? Why, why get involved and take a look at this, this whole flag stick question? Well, Adam, uh, you know, I played golf all my life, was uh, a competitive junior uh, amateur and uh, played in college, played at uh, Michigan State and spent uh, a lot of my childhood uh, chasing that white ball around and uh, got to college and, and uh, engineering world kind of opened up to me. And it, it's like, uh, wow, this is pretty cool. So mm-hmm. I got going down the engineering path and, and uh, didn't stop till I was fully degreed up and uh, degrees from Michigan state bachelor's and Cal Berkeley master's and PhD. And, uh, but I still had that, that golfing interest in, in, in Jones. So most of my professional career, I've, I've spent a couple of years uh, working full-time for Callaway Golf and consulted with them, spent some time working with uh, a cushion at Cobra mm-hmm. and consulted with them. And so I've been in the, the golf industry, you know, a lot of years. And it's been a great pleasure to mix the technical side with with the golfing side and now with regards to the 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 flag stick uh issue when when the rules changed um everyone was curious you know was is the flag stick uh gonna help out uh did the usj goof up it it actually crossed my mind (laughs) and uh last well actually it was about two years ago the uh a question was brought up and with the open jordan spieth remember he made all those putts on the greens that were end of the day and uh, Mm -hmm. at that at that time i tried to do a study with the uh the balls i'd go out to our club early in the morning you know fresh greens roll some putts and uh at that time i was using a a pvc pipe the the same uh, irrigation size 
that's used in an air cannon. Hmm. You build an air cannon for a golf ball. There's an irrigation size pipe that uh, is very handy. So anyway, uh, then I'd go out late in the day when everyone had walked on that and uh, try to uh, to uh, quantify how hard it was for Jordan to, to putt like that at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And uh, I struggled with that because the uh, as you roll putts on the green, uh, they actually they actually wear a little groove in there. Hmm. And uh, so you sit there and roll those putts, and uh, you get you get a groove. So you can't really say, oh, that one hit um, more bumps. It's something that that you can actually see. And we came across that with this current study as well. But anyway, in early January, I got my PVC pipe out and our hot list panel was like, you know, Hey, what's the, you know, technical rub on this. And I said, this, this would be easiest just to measure it. And so the, uh, you know, you prop up a, uh, PVC pipe and roll a ball down there and mm-hmm. you get a, a decent roll, but that wasn't as repeatable as, as I wanted the, I tried a stimp meter and a stimp meters, not as accurate either. And uh, went to Home Depot, got a, a U channel that so the ball would roll down there. Put it on a grinder, ground off the the end of that, and that was that was decent. But the uh, the Cal Poly coach Scott Partwright had a perfect putter that he used mm-hmm. with the kids to you know uh, read read putts. You know, you read it and then see how it goes. And I said, Hey Scott, can I borrow that? I I really need to do that. So. That's that's where I got started, and um, that was that was probably second week January or or late January, mm-hmm. and uh, then the uh, then it was a matter of just working on the process, uh, seeing what what variables we wanted to uh, to get in there and to eliminate what variables. And so, from an idea early on in the year. And it should be stated, too, that this was a a study that you did in response to the rule change and nothing else. So we'll just kind of leave it at that. But you go go into the method. And as far as the the testing method itself, the variables, as you and I both know, there are so many different variables in the game of golf that you have to take into account. But the method that you use to kind of start this test, uh, you, you used putting speeds of different types uh, or different speeds uh, and as I understand in the article on golfdigest.com take the flag stick out uh, the speeds that you worked with were putts that ended up two and a half four and a half and then 12 feet past the hole is that right that's right and the uh, you, you eliminate all the variables you eliminate the player uh, but uh, all of that and, and the green coming up to the hole uh, all the the flag stick in or out and the the ball hole interaction depends on the speed of the ball at the hole and uh, the line that the ball is taking uh, towards the hole. Mm. The uh, the speed of the ball is like you say we we were were curious to get an answer so we just said well let's just call it you know how far past it goes, that would be a measure of speed for us. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so that's, that's what we did. Tried a lot of, uh, different s- speeds. We had a very rainy winter out here in California. So, you know, I would, I would get a couple days of sunshine. Uh, I know that, you know, the, uh, you're back in Chicago, so you, <laughs> you couldn't be doing testing like this. And, I was I was almost at a point thinking was like you know oh I might as well be back in the Midwest because uh, <laughs> we were fighting the rain and the courses were closing, so every time I go out there you know we get set up, put put the perfect putter so that it released the ball about you know two and a half feet uh, away from the hole so that the ball got on the green and, and got a good roll going, and. Uh, then the the speed that I had, I characterized as, you know, how far past the hole that it went. 
And from the, the testing surface, so the, the test was conducted, as I understand it, at Cal Poly's uh, practice facility, the Dairy, Dairy Creek Golf Course. And so were you using a, a flat putting surface, I'd imagine? Was there a break in the putt? Just to kind of level set for the listeners. The, uh, what I do is, is uh, search around for, for a flat putt. And the, uh, the Cal Poly golf team practice facility, it, it's a, uh, a course that uh, due to water restrictions, they, they uh, closed down nine holes. And Cal Poly took that over for a, a practice facility. So it was one of the actual greens, the eighth green used to be there, is now the practice putting green for the Cal Poly golf team. And so I, I generally, uh, I searched out uh, a flat putt and uh, if anything, slightly uphill. And, uh, but I also tried some putts that, that had some break mm-hmm. through the, the different uh, days. And so I think the first, the, I did a video that, that, uh, golf digest put up there. And, and that day, uh, we were looking at a, a left or righter mm. and I was looking at, you know, low side, high side. Is there any ad- advantage? And, uh, throughout all those tests, the, the results were con- consistent, uh, hmm. all the way through the testing through the end of January and February. And so let's talk a little bit about those results. Now, as a player, you know, certainly you've been in the game for a very long time. I've played for over 20 years. And, you know, there are instances when I'm probably out playing a solo round where I'll leave the flag stick in. And quite frankly, Tom, I uh, even to this day, even after reading your study, I still don't know whether or not the flag stick helps or hurts me. <laughs> I mean, I, I just probably not as good a golfer to really understand that. But from the results from your test, uh, what happened? So let's start maybe with the two and a half footers or the ones that would finish two and a half feet past. I'd imagine that those were probably dropping pretty frequently. Yeah. The, the, if you hit a, a good putt, it's not going to matter. Pin in, pin out. If your ball has, you know, good speed coming into the hole. So two and a half feet past it's, uh, my test results showed that it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you're going to make them all, whether you're uh, straight on to the pin or offset to the pin. Mm. Uh, there's just not enough speed for the the ball to hit the pin and deflect and get over to the edge of the hole uh, and lip out like it does with the, the faster putt. So two and a half feet past the hole, uh, no difference. It doesn't matter. The uh, as as you get up to four and a half feet mm-hmm. past the hole, then that ball is carrying a little bit of speed of the, at the hole, enough speed that uh, it can, on a, on an offset putt, it can come in, uh, deflect off the pin and ricochet to the right, and uh, it, it catches the edge of the hole before it's dropped far enough to be captured by the hole. Hmm. Now, the four and a half foot putt at the straight on is with or without the pin, you're going to, you're going to make all of those putts. Mm. So it's a matter of being off the straight on, you know, not hitting the pin dead center is where you come into some, uh, disadvantages, having the pin, the, the flag stick in for putts that are carrying some speed. And as the study mentions, only 45% of the putts that, went towards the hole where the flag stick was, was in actually fell into the hole. So it, it was a pretty dramatic decline, if I understand correctly. That's correct. And that was the, uh, you know, I, I, I did that one. We did, uh, I did 90, 90 putts, three sets of 30. And uh, so we'd roll them with the three different pins that we had and the pin out. And uh, at, at 30 at a time. And because, as I was mentioned from that previous study, the little groove in the green that wears, and I think it, what you're doing is just laying down a little path of grain mm-hmm. that, that, that makes it. Now, for this type of testing, that's an advantage because you want to deliver the ball on the exact line each time. Mm-hmm. But 
as as I tested the the ball with with the pin in, it would hit hit the the pin or the flag stick, uh, deflect to the right and hit the right edge of the cup. So after 90 putts with all those balls, that right edge was starting to wear a little bit, and that's that's a challenge on these. Hmm. This testing is is that you you are using a, a system that that can change on you. Yeah, the measurement system always has to remain the same, but I would imagine as you're explaining that in this instance, there are uh, materials within the testing environment that, you know, erode over time, as as you just mentioned. That's right. But, you know, yes, for for the the putt that was set up, and, you know, like I said, over the weeks, it it wasn't hard to set up a putt that was off-center, that uh, had similar, very similar tr- results to where, you know, making 90% of those putts with the pin, the flag stick out, and like uh, 45% with the flag stick in. Hmm. Now, that's interesting. And Tom, you and I were talking a little bit before we started here, where in order for a ball to actually fall into the hole, it has to reach or pass a certain point for the center of gravity to actually pull the ball into the hole. Can you talk a little bit about, about that and what people should look for? Yeah. So the, the, uh, essentially when, when the, the ball, uh, enters the hole, it's, it's in free fall. And so it's called trajectory motion. And the, the acceleration of gravity is, is what's acting on it. And so it just uh, it has some initial velocity. So it falls a gravel and goes, drops down into the hole. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the, uh, when you have the flag stick out and, and that ball uh, enters the, the front edge of the hole, it starts to fall. And it, it falls with uh, the, a rate that's a, a time squared term. So it starts to fall a little bit, but then it increases more and more and more. So if, if the flag stick is out, it has a greater distance that it's allowed to fall. Mm. And the, it only needs the, the impacts, uh, are the forces of impacts are related through the center of gravity. And so the center of gravity of the golf ball is in the center. So a rolling ball only needs to fall 0.84 inches, half the, the diameter of the ball hmm. to be captured by the hole. And that happens in like uh, less than a tenth of a second. Hmm. And so now if you come in at an offset and you impact that flag stick and it heads off to the right, that ball's only going to have, uh, like, for if, if I was to be 0.7 inches off to the right of the flag stick, it would only travel two inches where it would be in free fall. Be like an inch and a half till it made contact with the pin, and about a half an inch till it deflected out and, and saw the right edge of the cup. And at, at that time, the that extra inch that it missed out being in free fall it's it's still got a little under a half an inch for that center gravity to fall to be below the surface of the green and so what you're doing is you're just running out of real estate i see and so just and maybe that point there is is really the the good summary of it is you're you're basically putting a barrier in the target that would not allow the ball enough time to have that center of gravity do its job and basically pull the ball into the hole. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Well, what's also, what's also interesting about the study, Tom, is you had mentioned how leaving the flag stick in could actually help in another way, and that is to reduce the number of three putts. And so if I understand that you know train of thought then, if you uh, have a longer putt, for example, 20 feet, and you leave the flag stick in, and the ball's coming in at a certain rate of speed that then glances off the flag stick, you're going to leave yourself a shorter second putt. Is that right? Yeah, that's that's generally true. 
the, the flag stick takes a lot of the energy o- away from the golf ball. And, uh, in all of, all of my putts, the, uh, the, the study on golf digest, I had a, a, a radar plot of the, the data that was presented. The, uh, the, you're, you're going to have a, a, a lip out without the flag is going to be further away than hitting the flag, the flag stick. And I think, it's it's like you mentioned earlier, like, you know, well, if you're, you know, 25 feet away, you just leave it in. And, and uh, to be honest, I was I was playing yesterday and uh, the uh, I told I had like a 15 footer and they said, oh, you're the only one who's going to take that out. And I said, well, <laughs> people are going to call me, call me out on it if, right. if I don't take it out. Yeah. <laughs> and but, you know, I play for fun and and. Uh, but also it's, it's like situations where let's say over, over 30 feet, uh, you know, it's, it's like you're wanting a two putt and if you're average golfers like us and, uh, and so for that long bomb, you, you know, you hit it and the, uh, I w- actually last week I was, uh, officiating the, the big West women's championship and, you know, sitting off to the side there, I watched a girl hit a, a long putt, 40, 45 feet, and uh, she left the, the flag stick in, and it hit and kicked out. And it looked just like, you know, w- one of my putts that I rolled, and I go, oh, that would have been in. Hmm. But she's as happy as can be because she's back there going like, okay, I got a two putt. I got a two putt. Right. And, 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 and she hit a really good putt, you know, and, and, and so she's still happy with her result. Uh, she's not saying, oh, that would have gone in if I'd have had the flag stick out. Hmm. That's really interesting. And, you know, obviously the de facto poster child of the whole flag stick debate, uh, debate has been uh, Bryson DeChambeau. And, you know, you even mentioned uh, Bryson in the article a little bit where he is convinced that leaving the flag stick in is a benefit. But what I remember is even watching the Masters uh, this year, uh, Bryson on the 18th hole, I forget which round it was, but actually hit an approach shot that ended up rolling like a putt and hit the flag stick and bounced out. <laughs> and so I couldn't help but wonder and say, wow, uh, how do we feel about the flag stick now? And certainly that was a different circumstance. But where, where from your perception, uh, Tom, or your opinion, where where is Bryson's stance on this whole thing, or people that think along those lines of where it would actually be a benefit to keep the flag stick in? Well, I think that uh, the clearly, if you, if you hit the flag stick square on, it, it, it's an advantage. And uh, but a lot of us, you know, don't hit every putt into the center of the hole. The you know what I found throughout all these months that I was rolling these putts is, is like, okay, it's, it's the putts that are a little bit off center that, you know, hit and, and kick out. So, so that's a disadvantage. Uh, and I think that a lot of people have, have told me, and there's a, a little bit of a, a, a way, a, a, a perception, it's easier to read the distance and to get a feel for the distance with that flag stick in and in some ways maybe even get a little bit of a read on the break uh if if the the cup was put in properly Hmm. and so it's you know for the for the average player the uh i would say that you know okay you know if if you're want to really make the putt take it out you know that there's there's problems for the uh the off off center putts entering the hole but uh if if you hit a good putt like a putt that would have gone two feet by you're fine you're going to make it anyway Mm -hmm. but it but it's just you know for you know for me it's it's like uh from within you know 20 feet it's like no take it out i want to see that hole all all the all the space that's waiting there for my golf ball I, I would agree with that, and I've tried both methods before, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, and again, talking with you and and reading me the study, um, you know, I, I'm convinced that it makes more sense, and there's data to show now that 
the point you just rose you know take the flag stick out if you want to increase your chances of actually making the putt especially if you hit an off center uh putt to a degree is there anything tom in the study that you still want to build on or something that you wish you would have done different anything along those lines yes adam definitely the uh the you know you you go down this path and you study this and you know i i sit out there rolling these balls on on what we call out here a cold winter day and uh <laughs> the uh you're you're like going like am i crazy <laughs> so, oh man so I, I i built this 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 kind of a knowledge base out and one of the things in in trying to sort out that the velocity of the ball instead of the the feet pass per hole. There was a paper in the USGA green section that basically said, oh, this is, uh, this is how to use a stim meter to get the, the uh, coefficient of friction for the green. Hmm. And if you, if you give someone like me the coefficient of friction, then, then we can figure out exactly how the different, you know, feet pass would be, would be, this velocity and that's something that i'd like to do and uh i think that probably uh this this june or july this summer sometime the uh i'll i'll try to get uh uh, trey rogers at at michigan state which is where i went to school you know he sent me an email and he said oh a nice article he works with the, the golf teams there and uh he's an agronomist out of the turf turf grass program and he said if you want to work together we'll we'll you know we'll get you greens whatever you'd like so Hmm. i'd like to relate the uh the velocity of the ball to the the feet pass which in my terms is coming up with that uh coefficient of friction the the study in the usga green section had had some uh some small problems that that I'd, I'd like to address a little bit better in terms of the the rolling and translating energy and that's that's getting into the weeds deep um which is fine i mean so, our listeners love to <laughs> to get into the weeds believe me tom they love to get into the weeds but uh, that all of that sounds like you know the makings of of additional studies that i'm sure a lot of people would be interested in yeah, I, you know, I definitely, you know, don't want to leave this right here at, at this point. I want to do some extra work. I, I'd like to measure the, actually measure the velocity of the ball and relate that to the, the stim meters so that uh, people doing different sort of testings can kind of have a, a way to figure out, oh, I was, I was four and a half feet past at this green, then what would I be on a tour green? Uh-huh. That type of that type of what ifs would be there. So it's I'm gonna I'm gonna keep at it and uh, and try to try to advance the, the ball down the field a little bit and uh, from a technical point of view and uh, give the next person a little bit of a head start if something like this comes up again. Listeners, once again, we're talking to Mr. Tom Mace. He is a mechanical engineer over at Cal Poly. Uh, Tom, thanks again for coming on to the show. Just uh, one more quick question for you, and it's regarding uh, the feedback you've received at this point. You kind of touched on it earlier about how your friends were kind of ribbing you a little bit about uh, needing to leave the flagstick in or not during a round. But I would have to imagine that PGA Tour players or any uh, pro player would be very interested in this type of thing. Uh, Is it any chance in, in your, I don't know, if you're planning on this or not, but would there be any chance that you'd entertain the abil- uh, chance to work with a tour player to l- help them understand this a little bit more? Sure. You know, the, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. And, uh, and actually from, from my years working in the golf industry, the tour players, they have a wealth of knowledge that, uh, they're amazing individuals. I'll just put it that way. The things I've seen, uh, I've seen shaft manufacturers go out there and say, you know, here are these irons and 
you know, I put the spine here on this one and this one, two identical six irons made up. And these tour players are like, they, they hit two shots and they go, this is the one. And it's like, how do you do that? <laughs> and so, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely, uh, it, I'm definitely interested in, in things like that. And, uh, the, uh, the problem for me is I, I like to live in the weeds and, and do the hardcore technical stuff. But I think I think there's some chances for some some good collaborative work there. Well, we will keep our eyes peeled for any collaborative work that you're going to do, as well as any additional testing. And listeners, once again, you can read the study on GolfDigest.com. Uh, Take the flag stick out is the name of the article. Tom, thanks so much for coming on, and hopefully we can uh, talk more about future studies that you conduct. All right, Adam, it was a pleasure, and and. Uh, I'm hoping to send you some warm, warm, good golfing weather as, as quickly as possible. I appreciate that, sir.